All right, there has never been and more than likely never will be a more powerful Bay Area media figure than Herb Cain. His column, I mean, if you had a restaurant, you better hope Mr. Cain liked the food. Uh, he won a Pulitzer Prize. His column for over 50 years was, I think, <laughs> the first red deal in the morning by many, many people. And his son, Christopher Cain, now writes a column for the uh, Examiner. And I read a great column by Chris, which had me in, in, invite him in uh, tonight, saying they had the deal at Moose going at Moose's restaurant in they North did. Beach going on 10 years. And you said that finally uh, the celebrities weren't there, but the real friends finally were there to honor your dad. Yeah, it took a while to weed out the slackers, but we finally got him out of there. It was, it was really a fun room to go into it because uh, you could tell those people who were there for the man and not there for the capital T, capital C column in yeah. the scene, but just people who wanted to remember him and what he meant to the city. And there was a great casual fun feeling to the room where uh, it, it wasn't so much... Um, let's all try and set the clock back sure. and be as it was 10 years ago, but let's celebrate what we have today and how we can make it better. I distinctly remember your dad's funeral. I mean, this was like a, a national holiday, in a sense, here, here in, in San Francisco. Just for fun, when, when you were growing up, did you sense how powerful your dad was? You know, early on I didn't, and, and one of the oddest questions I would always get is, what was it like growing up with Herb Cain? Because for most of my young life, he wasn't Herb Cain to me. He was just my father, and it was more when I reached high school age. I, I went out to high school, and I'd come back, and, and we'd hang out, and that's when sort of the impact of it would what happened and it's uh it, it was it was an odd experience and and you'd get people who would who would come up and they'd see my dad and and you were sort of the speed bump on the way to my dad this could sound <laughs> like a jab you ever see your dad pay for anything and and i mean that from the sense that everybody wanted to curry favor oh yeah he was a horrible Irish dice player so okay uh, <laughs> but you know what i'm saying no like, he, even sinatra you know, stories would be that Frank Sinatra, when he would be appearing here, wanted to make sure that your dad liked what he was doing. And Sinatra hated the press. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, I, I think he didn't look at my dad as the press, though. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he was a, he was a, a drinking buddy and a person who uh, saw life through the same vodka-colored glasses. And, yeah. uh, you know, the, of course, my dad also drank scotch for a long yeah. time. So that immediately got you into Frank's corner. Your dad, though, had to spend every night out. Or was that an exaggeration? Uh, no, he he really did yeah. spend every single. And he night liked being out, huh? He did. There was he was one of those people who his life and his job there was no separation at all. He was always on the hunt for an item. He was always looking for the next thing. And and would Willie Brown have been mayor without your dad? Oh, never. With those clothes, no, no never no. would have happened. <laughs> I mean, if my father hadn't introduced him to Wilkes Bashford, yeah, I think it, it would be the end. Yeah. Where'd your dad though draw the line? Because I mean, all of us who know Willie, it's pretty tough not to like him. But when you have the power of a man running the city, and not in your hands, but you're aiding in it, how'd your father deal with that? Well, I think the people, uh, the reason people did, uh, you know, not get overly concerned about the power is even with someone like Willie Brown, if my father didn't like something that he had done, he would go after him in the column, and Willie would call him up and go, "What are you doing to me?" Her? So your dad knocked me. Willie. Oh yeah. Did he ever knock Wilkes Bashford? Not in the press, no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because he could, like I well, said, he, if he didn't saw like, the ties he was wearing before he met Willie. It was in the film clip. Yeah, yeah. That's big. Oh, man. That's after you inflate him up, you know. That. Would your dad have made it if he was working today? Now with all the mass media? Um, you know what I'm saying? There, there's so much out there that nobody can really grab uh, a toe. I, I think he would have, because I think the story that he told was such a unique story, and the vision he had of San Francisco was so singular uh, that I think it still would have broken through. Yes. Yeah, all right. How long did it take you before you got, got over your dad's passing? Uh, it took a while, actually. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the first column that I wrote for the Chronicle wasn't supposed to be a column. Yeah. It was I was having trouble emotionally getting my arms around my father passing away. And my wife said, why don't you write a column to your father? Okay. You're a writer. So I did that as a way of just getting my arms around it. Sent it to Carol Vernier, who was his uh, assistant, mm -hmm. and she gave and it And the rest is history. You know a guy who goes out every night without a column? Tom Sinkovitz. We've got to finish. <laughs>